It's Motley Fool Tech Weekly. I'm Chris Hill here with Evan New and Eric Bleeker. Earnings Palooza. Let's start with Facebook uh, and the big headline, of course. Mobile ads now making up 41% of all ad revenue. That's impressive. <laughs> Ridiculously impressive. And I've gone from you when we look at they weren't even breaking out mobile. They weren't even a player in mobile ads until the third quarter of last year. It was 12% of revenue. And then we just go forward. Uh, it climbs all the way to 23%, 30%, finally 41%. Just stunning growth figures when we look at. And here's my concern with it was always, number one, you have to weigh mobile and the growth there against desktop basically falling off. But mobile has become such a growth accelerator that, yeah, desktop was off 4%, but no one cares because mobile is just so fantastic. And the other thing that we have to look at, often when you introduce an ad, it's really effective at the start because users are being tricked, you know? And we saw click, click through rates up some like 5,000% because they were pulling the ads in the content. And my fear was, okay, they're gonna get this initial huge bounce off it because it's a new form of advertising, you know? Pretty soon though, it's gonna become the banner on the right rail, you know, where you just ignore it. You've got banner blindness. It hasn't happened. In fact, you know, they're not only seeing more inventory, but they're seeing a higher rate per ad. They have done something that's just so incredible, people don't realize it because no one's ever been able to really do anything innovative in internet advertising. Again, it's been essentially banner ads for a decade and a half, and here finally Google puts advertising in stream. It's partially what makes television so successful, the stream of content, the advertisings inside it, and they're getting great results. And the thing is, they're not staying pat either. They're really innovating on top of this. Some people say Facebook has ADD. I say, great, <laughs> you know, because they're the only company really doing anything different. How many other you know, companies have had a chance to do some? And now everyone's just following their game plan. You know, Twitter's essentially doing the same thing. So I've, for a while, I've been suspicious of Facebook, especially I wanted to see that they could do something fundamentally different advertising. Well, the time is now. They're doing something different. They're building off it. You know, Facebook's a company that I haven't bought. I would, I would more than consider right now. I am very intrigued. I, I am wondering if I'm letting a really, you know, generational kind of company pass by with what they've recently done ads. And this is the kind of thing that doesn't show up on the balance sheet, but just think about the narrative in the financial media of Facebook, whereas uh, it, over the past year it's been they're struggling. Even with respect to advertising, there was that whole uh, story about General Motors sort of dropping, you know, the $10 million ad budget. Now the narrative has totally shifted to, uh, you know, a company that's firing on all cylinders. Yeah, you remember, if you remember about a year ago, Mark Zuckerberg was like, I want to dispel this myth that Facebook can't make money on mobile. And I think he's done exactly yeah. that. Because actually in their most recent 10Q, they did disclose in the year ago quarter, uh, Q2 2012, uh, mobile is 3% of total ad revenue. Yeah. This quarter, 41%. If you actually you know, do the numbers a little bit more, it's 30 million, now it's 650 million. That's humongous, like just in dollar terms, like growing that business mm -hmm. from 30 to 650 in a year. And then if you dig a little bit further, I, I did the average revenue per mobile user, that's climbed from six cents to 84 cents in a year. And, wow. th and that's just incredible to think about. And so, because not all that growth is just coming from mobile users scaling up, it's really per monetization per user is significantly increasing. And I mean, I, I, you guys might have noticed too, if you look on your Facebook feed, there are times when you'll see an ad in your mobile feed and you go to your desktop and it's not there. And that just shows that all those advertisers are really just moving the, those ad dollars to the mobile site, which I think is really, you know, dispelling that myth very, uh, very properly. Yeah, and the other thing about Facebook, just quick to wrap this up, is, you know, the thing that you always see, if you see something about Facebook on TV, it's this guy going, well, it's only grandparents who use it now. Kids don't want Cool. No data shows that. In fact, engagement has right. been increasing. I'm glad you looked over someone's shoulder at Starbucks to make your investment pick, but it's not reflected in the numbers. So if people want to rely on those lazy things, cool. But, I mean, the numbers are just really good all around this impressive quarter. Uh, another company reporting earnings, a company that was heavily dependent on Facebook, Zynga. Uh, and the, the train wreck continues. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's really just astonishing. Revenue down 31%, and even more astonishing for people who were bullish or willing to take a flyer on this stock, uh, part of the equation was the whole notion of, hey, they're getting into online gambling, and now they're out. So what is the thesis for buying this stock now? 
It, there was never really anything good about Zynga, in, in my opinion. Yeah, every, I mean, this quarter was terrible. But yeah, like you said, revenue down 31%, bookings down 38%, daily active users down 45%, monthlies down 39 Like, every number got crushed. There was one bright spot. Uh, Farmville and Farmville 2 combined bookings grew 29%, so that is still kind of their, their go-to. But is that actual money or like virtual pigs? So that's that's bookings, so that's their revenue, and they, they uh, subtract, subtract out deferred revenue uh, changes. But then also monthly unique payers, the people that actually pay for this stuff, which has always been about 2% of their total users, that got cut in half. That went from 4.1 million to 1.9 million. So, I mean, you're very quickly seeing that people are really losing interest in Zynga's titles. And, I mean, they're no longer a big part of Facebook's business. Facebook used to disclose Zynga's percentage of revenue because they used to be a 10% customer. That dropped to like 7% in the first quarter, and they, they don't mention them anymore because they're just not that important to, you know, so while Facebook is really crushing it on mobile, Zynga is getting itself crushed on mobile because no one, like, their business model does not transfer very well to mobile platforms. <laughs> Uh, Don Matrick, the CEO, I thought this was astonishing. He, he actually warned that there were going to be two to four quarters of volatility. Mm -hmm. but, like we haven't seen that already? <laughs> Does he mean volatility to the downside? <laughs> I think if you use absolute values, their quarter was great. Everything's up. But, you know, I think when you look at Zynga, it, it is a lesson to a lot of people bought into it on gambling because it's, hey, there's there's this thesis out there, but no one really knew how well they could address gambling. They had obviously done poker, but it just shows that if you've got a losing investment kind of chasing this pie in the sky idea when no one fundamentally knows if they can execute on, more often than doesn't, doesn't happen. And also, when tech companies are failing, they use a word called pivot. It's not, oh, our business sucks, so we're doing a new business. It's, we're pivoting to address this. Um, very few companies can pivot. In a way, Facebook has pivoted from the platform story to mobile, and they're a huge success on it. Zynga, you know, they're trying to pivot to gambling. Not going to happen. And, you know, now they're trying to kind of rally around. And the only reason people are really buying Zynga right now is because they've got a ton of uh, real estate and they've got a ton of cash. The fundamental business, I think most investors buying into this would say, is not worth anything. It's a big option at this point. And gambling would have been super competitive too. So it's not like that was some yeah. holy grail. Like if they get in, all of a sudden everything's great. It's like you get into that, and then you're facing the the casino operators that know right. what they're doing and are going to jump in and compete like hell with you. So yep. I mean, it's not like some end all be all in, in the first place. Yeah. Uh, let's pivot to Baidu. <laughs> uh, see what I did there? Um, <laughs> Another company pivoting. Um, earnings out and uh, mobile revenue. Speaking of mobile revenue, uh, it turns out theirs is higher than Chihu's. I mean, yeah, so their shares up 10% on Thursday. Yeah, and what, what happened too was it popped really high at the start of the day. I think it was up 16, 17%. It bled down to a, about 10% gain, a little bit more. And I think what happened was they had just never really said anything about mobile. They just kept going, you know, it's pretty insignificant, but we're growing it. We're making all these investments. They finally put a number on it and they said 10%. And that was enough for investors. Because if you look at the rest of the quarter, I mean, sales were up 39% year over year, which is good. It's decelerating, but that's still a good level. Net income was actually off 5%. You know, you don't see many companies grow sales 40% and actually decline on the net income side. So there were other bad parts. I think that's why people, as the day progressed, kind of said, eh, well, there's still problems. Here's my thing. I'm a Baidu investor. I like Baidu a lot. The thesis is very simple on this, and sometimes the most simple theses are actually the smartest. A company named Chihu essentially started doing search and competing with them, immediately got about 10% share. If you're a Wall Street, if this company is grabbing 10% share and, you know, that means your model for Baidu in the coming quarters is going to be off because all of a sudden this company is now grabbing some of that share. So because you have to adjust all the upcoming quarters, you need to get, have all the other analysts and it creates a cycle, massive downgrades. You see people running away from the stock. But from a long-term picture, China, its mobile ramp was kind of an echo boom to the U.S. It happened about two, three years behind. So with Google doing really good in mobile, people want to see results for Baidu. But they're fundamentally two or three years behind. China, though, ramped extremely quickly. So you will be able to see it once they figure it out extremely fast. And I think you will see some just great growth in the coming quarters. And the other thing about it is they get to copy Google's game plan. They get to piggyback off yeah, the Android. Yeah, they get to just steal <laughs> everything from Google. There's not a lot of companies that just go yoink and just take the best ideas. 
They get to do that. I think Baidu is still a fantastic buy for long-term investors because they're in a great market. They're in an advertising space that's still growing. And when you look at the Chinese mobile market and Chinese advertising in general, it's the place you want to be. And I think if you're not looking at the long-term on Baidu, I still don't think Chi who's a big threat. I think it's a fundamentally uninnovative company and Baidu will crush them over the long term. So, you know, my take on Baidu, I'm glad to see the gains today, but I think I'll have more going forward. Uh, let's wrap up with uh, Apple and sort of the whole notion of Apple, uh, not their earnings, but sort of their role in the video game industry. Um, Electronic Arts announcing 76% of their revenue came from digital. Um, and, you know, you see all these headlines about, you know, Apple is their, you know, their largest retail partner. What is Apple to the, to the, you know, to the video They've, game industry? Are they a friend? They figured it out. Pack up. Everyone go home. Start buying video game companies. I mean, there's a couple things to this. You have to look at the nuances of it. They didn't have a major release last quarter. So, you know, you don't have a major release, you're not going to have uh, money coming in from the non-digital side. Uh, the other big factor, too, the digital money also pours in from consoles. You know, you look at Battlefield 3, you know, there's a lot of add-on packs from this, they get digital revenue from games on consoles. Now, when we're looking at overall whether or not someone like Apple is a friend or foe, a lot of people might misunderstand this. They go, hey, you know, these companies have things on app stores. You know, they're making money off this. Why would Apple, they're returning all this money to developers. But, but what it is is to big companies with thousands of employees, Normally, you know, you're selling at an ex, uh, sorry, a Best Buy in the past. There's only so much shelf space. You get to dominate that. You know, your stuff gets front and center. There's limited inventory. Now you're having to compete against development teams that have two or three people. And if your app's on the feature page for the first week, it's going to do this. And the second it goes off the feature page, it's going to do that. Also, now gamers are only willing to pay two or three dollars for a game. So that's a big thing, too. I think with EA, they're figuring out a few ideas. Freemium is not a new idea. I mean, we talked about Farmville or earlier in Zynga, but they create a game, Simpsons Tapped Out. Um, it's wild. You know, people won't pay 2 or $3 for a game, but they'll pay, you know, the equivalent of $15 for, you know, yeah, Mr. Works. Burns Mansion or whatever, <laughs> right? So they've done a good job with that, and they're finally starting to get some traction. Um, but over the long term, you know, I still do question not, not whether or not the App Store is, you know, bad for video games in general, but video game companies you can invest in. Because I just think the app store is not conducive to giant companies with, uh, you know, thousands of employees when, you know, it, it is fundamentally hit driven. You know, no app stays on top forever. And, uh, you know, your shelf life's going to be, you know, shorter on these. So I think for EA this quarter, it's going to get a lot of good press. A lot of people are going to be singing the praises. But you know, it's still a very long hill to climb. Very competitive on, I mean, it's a new platform, which is good for any developer to kind of try to hit, but at the same time, it's, like you said, it's so competitive. It levels the playing field. The indie guys come up with a hit, like Temple Run was is an indie developer, and that game has taken off. They get franchise deals now. Sure. And, I mean, I think ultimately Apple is more of a friend than a foe just because they're kind of the platform side of it. They're not competing directly. They're not making their own games or anything like that. And a lot of people expect them to do this, you know, integrate games into their rumored TV set, which could also be another in route, another platform for developers to, to kind of hitch on or hitch a ride on. So I think they're they're more friendly than like a threat than anything. Mm -hmm. And we will see also, you know, the newest uh, iOS 7. Uh, it's going to allow controls for video games. It will be a niche, but you know, maybe that's an avenue to start selling games at a little higher price point initially. So, you know, you don't have to only do freemium to be at the top of the charts. Because let's face it, things like Candy Crush Saga are dominating right now. When the when the iPhone first came out, you saw things like Angry Birds, where it's just an upfront purchase. That narrative has shifted, and now it's all freemium stuff, uh, Clash of Clans, uh, you know, etc. You know, we'll see if that can make a dent because even even if you know five percent of your install base has a controller, it's a huge install base. So that's a big opportunity. All right, that's going to do it for Motley Fool Tech Weekly for Evan New and Eric Bleeker. We'll see you next week.